Hi Leo, Rosemary at Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your September 2022 astrology. So the sun is in your second house for most of the month until the 22nd along with Venus who will be there until the 29th. Now the second house represents our revenue, so our money, um, our wealth, our valuables in terms of movable property. Immovable property such as real estate belongs to the fourth, but you know whatever is movable belongs to the second. And the sun is going to be um, highlighting that aspect of your life. So you might be thinking about your wealth, how to increase your wealth, um, you know, how to increase your revenue. You might also use this energy, um, you know, especially with Venus there, Venus bringing a very uh, soft, harmonious energy to reflect on how you feel about your wealth. Um, you know, as a Taurus, often what we hear is, you know, do you own your possessions or do your possessions own you? How much of your security comes from what you own? How much of your self-esteem comes from what you own? And it's easy uh, for Leos to get into that sort of, you know, trap or pitfall because Leos, you know, you do like luxury and, and that's okay, right? There's no perfect sign. There's no good or bad. Um, Leos, Leos do like luxurious things, you know, the same way um, Tauruses get told, well, you love your creature comforts, you know, and as I said, you know, do you own your possessions or do your possessions own you? Um, so that's, you know, maybe one of the things that you have to look out for. Certainly a good time to explore that. But definitely whatever is going on does focus around your wealth, your revenue, and what you own. So as I said, it may be that you are wanting to share that with others and uh, have them partake in what you have or at the same time and or it can be simply reflecting on, you know, what wealth means to you or what wealth looks like to you and, um, you know, how much you are, you're, you're banking on that, ha ha, play on words, right? Sorry, pardon the pun, but you know, how much, how much space that takes up in your life. So, and how much space you want it to take up in your life and how uh, likely can you travel? How much do you need your, your creature comforts or your beautiful things? Having said that, Mercury here in your third house has a lot to do or everything to do with your, you know, local travels, local environment, neighborhood, siblings, cousins, um, you know, short term travel trips to school, to work, just, you know, about town type of thing, um, the places we go on a regular basis. So Mercury is, um, you know, making you more communicative in that area. You might be socializing more with people in your immediate environment, maybe your neighbors, maybe cousins, maybe siblings. You just might be out and about more, so to speak, something probably you Leos like to do. And Mercury is going to make you very um, mentally agile, quick-witted, um, you know, very much probably... Um, you know, out and about and social and, um, you know, a, a good guest or a good person to be, uh, you know, just chatting it up with at the coffee shop type of thing. So that energy is there until the 10th of September, then slowly Mercury is going to go retrograde back into Virgo. Now Mercury is going retrograde on the 10th of September at eight degrees of Libra and will be back here in Virgo on September 24th. By then, the sun will have just moved in to Libra in your third house, bringing a focus to those third house things we just spoke about. And Venus will be on its way out of Virgo as well. Now, I'm, I'm overflowing in this reading um, for everyone into October a bit, but I just, I do because I want you to know that Mercury is going to go direct again on October 3rd at 24 degrees of Virgo. And is going to be back in Libra on October 10th and will have caught up to where it was on October 17th. When Mercury goes direct, it will be at the same degree it was on August 21st. So if you're looking for a repeat pattern, if you're looking for Mercury's message, and I did a video on that, Mercury retrograde is often trying to give us a message because Mercury is the messenger. Look back maybe to August 21st and back to these topics of the second house, wealth, revenue, uh, what you own, and perhaps there's a message there, or there's a realization, or there's some sort of conclusion. Sometimes, you know, astrologers will say, as Mercury, you know, the first pass, the situation arises, the retrograde, it comes to a culmination or a crisis, 
you know, I don't think it's always a crisis with Mercury retrograde. It's more of a message. And then as it moves forward again, there's some sort of conclusion or realization. Um, then Mercury, of course, at the beginning of October will be back here in Libra and the sun will follow and, um, or the sun will already be there rather and uh, Venus will have arrived there a little bit ahead. So this beneficial energy of the sun and Venus together that was in your second house is going to move into your third house. So there will be a focus perhaps on siblings, spending time with siblings. Of course, with, with Venus, you know, we always think of, um, you know, harmonious, uh, loving, um, you know, ties. So it could easily be something with siblings or cousins. Um, or it could simply be that you're focusing on your immediate environment, your short trips, maybe your um, you know, maybe there's a romance that could bloom because Venus is also related to romance. Just somewhere among your daily travels and trips, you might run into someone and, you know, that could mean that there's a romance also there on the horizon. Up here um, in the 11th house, Mars has moved into Gemini on the 21st of August. So, um, you know, Mars is pure energy. Mars is the motor and will... Um, you know, reach its goal without really worrying about what everybody else is saying or thinking. You know, Mars doesn't need other people on board or that doesn't have that tendency to want collaboration and cooperation like Venus does. Mars sort of doesn't care, actually. <laughs> um, you know, Mars will target a goal and uh, just, you know, use that dynamic, super dynamic energy to reach it. Now, the 11th house has everything to do with groups and organizations. So it's people you um, frequent or because it's within the boundaries of a group or, you know, it has to do with a common interest. It, I always say it can be something like a yoga group, uh, an astronomy group. It can be, you know, it can even be, you know, a certain group of people at work, um, something in that respect. I don't know how much Mars's energy would relate to there. Certainly, you could be uh, more energetic be within groups or organizations or be the person, uh, you know, spearheading a project and bringing that group or organization to a goal. But the 11th is also the house of hopes and wishes. So perhaps you are really focusing on something you've been wishing for for a long time or hoping for for a long time. And, you know, you want to make it a reality and it is a good time to use Mars's energy to do so. Mars will be direct for September and October. So that is a great time to harness that energy. November, December and into 2023, I didn't look up the exact dates, but Mars will be retrograde. So that energy will definitely be diminished and it won't be the time to initiate anything. Now in Gemini, Gemini is very mentally agile and Gemini could be giving you a lot of ideas or options in terms of reaching a goal related to um, something you've been hoping for for a long time. Or as I said, if it does relate to a group, it could be giving you a lot of goals or ideas that you want for the group you belong to. So a lot of options with Gemini. The trick is to narrow it down to one thing and then use Mars's energy to focus on that and to do the work and to, you know, to go for it. If you don't narrow it down, Venus will const a uh, Venus, sorry, Gemini will constantly be changing, you know, the target or moving things around or will have you changing your mind and Mars you'll be squandering Mars's energy because you'll be going in one direction and then you'll be opting for something else and going for something else. So as I said, narrow it down to one thing and then use that Martian energy to work diligently towards that goal. Um, you know, I can't obviously see everyone's chart. I can't tell you exactly how that will play out, but you know, it could be, as I said, a group organization related thing. Um, in that case, just be careful. Mars' energy can be a bit abrasive as well. Remember, Mars is the, the warrior. So you might be, you know, overly focused, not taking other people into consideration and, you know, just boldly marching forward and ruffling some feathers at the same time, especially if I said, as I said, this is something within a group that, um, you know, you are you're the leader of the project or, you know, you're, you're in charge of something and, um, you know, you're sort of the one 
carrying the ball, so to speak, or you're the one who is responsible for, for a project. As I said, Mars tends to be very individualistic, so just make sure you take other people into consideration. If this has something to do with hopes and wishes, um, you know, then the same thing applies, although you might probably be working uh, solo a bit more if this something is just related to your hope or something you've been hoping for. Um, the other thing is, don't forget, if it is something you've been hoping for, you know, a hope or, or a wish can be very, um, you know, very much a concept or an image um, or an idea. That's something that Gemini does really, really well. But then you have to translate it into the practical and into the, the tangible and bring it onto the physical plane and make it happen. So just remember, don't, um, you know, don't squander Mars's energy with too much Gemini planning, thinking, or ideas, or, you know, imaging. Try to think of a concrete way, once Gemini gives you the, the option you want, of how you're going to make that happen. So, Leo, having said all that and giving you all those warnings, let's talk about the full moon over here in Neptune in your eighth house. Now, I've talked about this before, and I won't go into too much detail, but Neptune um, in Pisces, Neptune is at home in Pisces, so is very strong and can really be his Neptunian self. Neptune tends to blur things. It's great for, um, you know, intuitive work and, and dreaming and, you know, just that, um, you know, looking past the reality or past the veil to see what's possible in terms of eighth house pursuits. So eighth house is, you know, other people's wealth. We were talking about the second here, but the eighth is other people's wealth, usually through a partner, or it can be someone that you approach for money, uh, like something like, um, you know, financial backing or a loan or a mortgage. And Neptune is presently retrograde. Now, you know, the planets that stay a long time in one sign and Neptune and Pisces is an example of that. Uh, you know, there's smaller cycles within that. So the retrograde is one smaller one. The full moon is also going to be a smaller one. And full moons can illuminate or um, bring culmination. And the moon will be full on the 10th of September. So um, in a water sign like Pisces that, you know, is related to emotion and feeling, and the moon that's related to our emotions and our feelings, it's easy to get really emotionally triggered. So give yourself a few days on either side of the 10th of September do look to the full moon to see if you can see, you know, um, uh, a pattern or to, to see something that you didn't notice previously in relation to something in the eighth house. And then once that, you know, emotional high has died down, you know, approach it more rationally and, um, you know, to figure out whatever the full moon might have revealed to you. Don't forget the eighth house, as I said, has to do with other people's money or other people's wealth. Um, you know, and there might be a dynamic here too, because uh, don't forget when the moon is full on the 10th, Mars will be beginning its retrograde and the sun and Venus will definitely be here in the second. So everything I was saying about the second house in your wealth, you know, there's an opposition here um, to the full moon in the eighth. So definitely it might not just highlight something here in the eighth house, but it might also highlight what's going on here in the second house. And, you know, that might be... Um, an op it's obviously an opposition, but it might be something between, you know, your wealth or how you conceive of your wealth or how important that is to you. Um, you know, like I was saying before, how related it is to, you know, self-esteem or security or self-confidence or self-image and your partner's wealth and, um, you know, how that is, is relating to, to what's going on in the second so, you know, an opposition doesn't have to be a deadlock. It's just about finding, um, you know, a middle ground or something, um, you know, that that works for, for both aspects. I'm, you know, I'm trying to think of an example of how that could play out. I don't know exactly, especially with Neptune there. Um, you know, maybe there's a lack of uh, clarity with money that you're trying to get from another source, or maybe it's not clear, um, you know, with Neptune there, if that funding is coming in and then that's affecting your wealth and you're going to have to see of, you know, how much, um, 
you know, self-reliance is going on here or how much you can rely on that. You know, these are all examples. It's going to play out differently for all of you. But the other thing I wanted to add is don't forget the eighth house also relates to the occult. And it's another one of those um, houses that, you know, is sort of is hidden or that has to do with secrets. You know, the eighth house relates to Scorpio. Um, it's the house also of our, um, you know, our, the things, the things we don't even like to look at. I, I always say, you know, the things we keep deep, deep, dark, buried below the surface. Um, actually the eighth house and Scorpio relate to whatever is hidden below the surface, right? Um, so, you know, what we're ashamed about or insecurities or, uh, you know, things that embarrass us. So talking about insecurities and uh, things we don't even want to look at ourselves, you know, that can also be something else, uh, insecurity, monetary insecurity, but that are, affects our sense of security and well-being, and then our own wealth and sense of security and well-being. So, you know, if I have a theme for you this month, Leo, it has a lot to do with your wealth and, um, you know, someone else's wealth. The 8th house also, remember, is inherent to inheritances, I want to say that right, um, you know, estates, money will to us through someone else. So um, that, you know, like I said, your wealth, other people's wealth, and how it relates probably to your sense of security or sense of well-being. Um, this can be more, you know, your, your physical well-being and security. This can be more emotional well-being and security, but you know, doesn't that sum up to everything to do with well-being and security, right? So there's going to be, um, you know, definitely a highlighting of those two areas. And, you know, maybe the, the challenge or the um, task this month is to see how much you're relying on that or maybe how much you're relying on it too much, um, you know, or how much what you own or what you have through someone else or are hoping to have through someone else is, you know, taking up too much space or playing off too much or influencing too much all these other aspects of you so how you feel about yourself or how you you know your level of self-confidence your level of of security um, you know all things like that so I hope that's not too obscure I hope I've been clear with that because you know there's a definite I think this month you know this is the the highlight pattern of what's going on for you and you know, always, I mean, we're just being called to grow and evolve and realize things about ourselves. So there's nothing bad going on here. You know, I, I don't really believe there's something as, you know, a bad sign or a really there's more, um, you know, or a bad placement. There's just more challenging placements sometimes or more challenging months and less challenging months or, you know, cycles even at that. But definitely, you know, the whole wealth, security, second house, house, eight house thing is really going on for you this month. So Leo, that's about it. I wish you a wonderful month of September. Don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe, and share this with someone you think might find it interesting. Take care, Leo. Love you. Bye.